Hi YouTube. Today we're going to make a box using a through dovetail joint. This is a through dovetail joint. You can see the tails on this side piece and the pins on the front piece. Uh, I made this dovetail, this through dovetail joint using the Porter Cable 4213 jig. Um, it took some time to fine tune the uh, jig, especially if you mess with the uh, factory set uh, router depth screw, which you're not supposed to touch. Of course, I did. That took me a long time to, to get it back uh, to the correct position. Uh, in any event, once you get that, once, once you fine tune everything, it's great for making multiple um, multiple drawers, boxes, uh, whatever joint uh, you need this dovetail for. Uh, so it's a great jig. So let's get started. Oh, and if you like the video, please hit the subscribe button. Thanks. Today we're going to try and cut a through dovetail on this box using a router and um, the Porter Cable dovetail jig. I ordered, or actually I received the Porter Cable uh, 4210 for Christmas, and that's a great. It's a great jig. It comes with the fingers though uh, to to cut a, a half blind dovetail, <clears throat> which is great. Uh, but in in for, for today's purposes, we want to cut a through dovetail, so I had to order the 4213 finger guide. Um, so we're going to go ahead and get started uh, with the through dovetail. Okay, the instructions tell you to mark your pieces. And I'll just show you what that looks like. Okay, on the inside they tell you to mark an eye. And because this is the front, it's going to be a pin. So this is going to be a P. This is going to be, uh, you're going to mark an I on here. Actually, you're going to mark I's on all four pieces because it stands for inside. Um, but this is the side piece, so this is going to be your tail. And they also want you to um, mark your corner. So A to A, B to B, C to C, and D to D. Okay. So obviously, uh, if you're looking at a piece and it doesn't say anything, you know that that's the outside. And here again, you see the I for inside and P for pins. Okay. Okay. The first thing we're going to do, um, we're going to we're going to set the the height of our finger guides. And what we do is we grab a scrap piece of material that is the exact same thickness as your sides and your fronts and backs. And what you're going to do is you put this in here. And once, once this is on, on top here, you're going to firmly press down on the fingers and you're going to tighten these end screws here. Okay, so the instructions tell you to cut the tail pieces first. And remember, here's the A, I mean the I, so this is the inside, and the instructions call for the outside is going to be facing the jig. So this is going to be the outside and it's going to be facing the jig. So I'm going to put it in here like this.
And once you have your tailpiece dogged in here, you want to make sure that there's an that it's evenly spaced from this finger to the end of the board here as it is from this finger to the end of the board. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to grab our ruler and make sure that this this end of the board is identical to the overhang of this end of the board. So we'll go ahead and do that now. right on the nose. Something else that is unique to the Porter Cable uh, jig. When the two boards meet, this line right here is supposed to correspond to these grooves that are in the finger. And you want to make sure that these grooves line up perfectly. And for the most part, it's looking pretty decent. Kind of happy with that. So, and once once your tail piece is all measured and everything is even on both sides here, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to take this Allen wrench, loosen it up, and you're going to want to slide this over till it stops against your work. And you're going to want to tighten it up. Okay. The next step is we're going to adjust the depth of the router bit on my router. Okay, so this router dig jig has a uh, convenient um, uh, conven convenient uh, application here which is the router bit depth gauge which is right here um, it comes factory set so when you receive it from whoever you bought it from whether it's Amazon or or wherever or Porter Cable directly do not touch this do not do what I did it literally took me almost two days to get this um, to get this uh, router bit adjustment guide perfect again. Um, yeah, I didn't I, I didn't realize I wasn't supposed to touch it. Um, me being a guy, I of course uh, I, I have a tendency to play with it before I I read the instructions. So. Uh, and as soon as I saw, as soon as I opened up the instructions, one of the first things it tells you not to do is to adjust this. So I'm giving you guys a warning: don't touch it. Okay. With that said, what you do is uh, we're we're going to cut. We're going to use the the um, the dovetail bit first. Um, We have to make sure that this is at the appropriate depth. And what we do is we just place this this collar in here, and we we let the bit go down until it stops. It's pretty straightforward, fairly easy. So here we are. And that looked like it stopped. I'm going to go ahead and dog that down. Now this should be the appropriate length, uh, the appropriate depth rather, to cut this, this board here. Next stop is cutting our first joint.
Okay. This is the first tail. Looks like a tail. And just so you guys know why they call it tail, that looks actually like a dove's tail right here. It shoots out about seven, in this case it's seven degrees to the right and seven degrees to the left. Okay. So now I'm just going to use the other tail piece. And again, the outside's, outside's going to be facing the jig. So we already set this up. We already tightened this piece here so we don't have to measure. This makes it really convenient. So we'll go ahead and cut the second tail piece. Okay, another good looking tail piece. I'm gonna put the tails over here. And it's time to cut the pins. There's, gonna, there's uh, some differences though. Um, we don't have to adjust the guide here that we tightened up with the Allen wrench. We don't have to adjust that at all. One thing we have to do is we have to take this, the finger guide, and we have to turn it around. Um, and we're going to go ahead and do that now. I'm going to loosen the end bolts. See, this was for the dovetail bit, and on the other side is going to be the pins, and that's we're just going to use a straight bit on this side. So we're going to turn this around, put it back, and I'm going to tighten it down. Okay. Now we're going to take our pins. Now, for the pins, here's the inside. What they tell me to do is that the outside has to be facing away from the jig. So here's the outside, and it's going to be facing away from the jig. So it's going to be towards me. I'm going to put this up here like this dog it down. Unplug the router. And now we have to put in our straight bit. So we're going to loosen, loosen this up. Also have to take this collar out. This is a three-quarter inch collar. Got to take that out. Uh, what did I do? Here we go.
put this new collar in. And the new collar is not three quarters, but it's three eighths. So half the size. Um, okay, so now we take the straight bit and we're gonna put the straight bit in. Tighten that up. And you really want to make sure that these bits are in nice and tight. And we're going to do the same thing that we did with the dovetail bit. I'm going to go ahead and put this in the guide, make sure that the depth is identical. So we're just going to lower this until it stops. Right there. Tighten it up. Now we should be good to go. Let's see how this see how this goes. Plug this back in. Yep, gotta tighten this. Screw back up. And here are the pins. And we're going to put the pins here for now. Now let's see, outside. Face it away. This is the second one. There we go.
Alright. <laughs> uh, you know what? <laughs> I've got twice as many cuts to make. I'm a <laughs> what you call an idiot. But we'll go ahead and do that now. Okay, so we finished cutting the, the tails and the pins on all four sides. Have them right here. These are the tails and the pins are right here. So what we have to do is we have to put them together and what we have to do is we have to have a bottom, which in this case is going to be made with quarter inch MDF. So we have to cut a dado in the bottom on all, all four sides and normally you could cut a dado uh, but what's going to happen um, this is a this is a pin board I don't know if you can see I set my my router table up with a dado blade it's a quarter inch dado blade and with the pins it's no problem because we're going to come through here and we're going to make the dado and whatever that dado is going to be hidden by the, the tail so you're not going to see that groove but when it comes to the to the tails it's going to come it's going to cut right along here if if i were to use a the 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 table saw or this router table it would make a mark so what you have to do is you have to have stops in here or at least I, I hastily constructed some stops in here um, so hopefully it won't go beyond this tail right here it'll start to cut probably a quarter quarter inch in and that's what I want so that it will hide the dado cut the dado cut so we're gonna go ahead and try this now Power helps. This actually came out all right. So you can see, you can't see the dado blade from the ends, and you'll be able to see all the ends on the box here, but you're not going to be able to see that dado cut. 
the same thing on the other side. So it looks like this is working out pretty good. So we're just going to go ahead and make the dado cuts in uh, the tails and the pins. Okay, now that we have the dado cuts in all the sides, the fronts and backs, we're ready to glue uh, the box together with the bottom piece, which again is a quarter inch MDF. Um, so let's get started. Don't glue this uh, five piece, by the way. Don't glue this one on the left for expansion. All right, Come in, sweetheart. I am. Oh. Say hi to you. Come around here and say hi to YouTube.
Oops. comes out, I want you to put this piece of wood in between this clamp and, and there, okay? I mean like put it in between this one? Yeah, put it, put it in between there. This? Yep. There you go. Perfect. That is so perfect. Just do one more. Excuse me. Okay. What is that? <laughs> What's what? The drawing. Oh, that's just a drawing. All right, one more. And then we get to let it. You're thirsty. Excuse me, sweetheart. So as you can see, uh, there are a lot of clamps on here, but it, it went together, I think, pretty smoothly. And uh, you know, I have uh, a it went together smoother than I than I thought it was going to go, which is great. So um, the next step is just uh, I'm going to sand all the uh, marks that I put into it from just handling it, and I may put I may stain it. Okay, so I took the clamps off. Um, I gotta say, everything's looking pretty good. Um, the um, the tails are a little proud sitting against the front here. So what I'm gonna do, um, I'm gonna take my Stanley number seven, see if we can't trim these down, make them flush to the fronts, or actually make them flush all around. So we'll go ahead and we'll we'll do that now. Actually doing a pretty decent job.
Okay, so now all these edges are nice and relatively smooth, flush against the other surfaces. So I'm just going to go through a light sanding, and when we return, I'm going to put a, uh, a um, we're going to stain it a little bit. So we'll see you then. Okay, so now that we have the box, it's, uh, we, we cut the through dovetails on all the joints. We, I used the hand planer to uh, make the joints flush to the sides and the front and back, and I sanded it a little bit. Now it's time uh, we're going to put a little bit of a poly or a stain on here. I'm going to be using, um, it's called Danish oil. This one happens to be a medium walnut. I'm, I've never used the medium walnut before, so this is going to be new for both of us. But in general, this Danish oil is fantastic finish. Uh, I like it a lot. Um, it seals and protects, and so that's what we want to do here. And I have my trusty sponge brush, and this is a this was a container of orbital sander pads. That's what I'm going to use to put this on. So let's get started. Let's see, do I have to mix this? Um, yes. Shake container thoroughly. I'm really liking this so far. The end grain, as you can see, is really popping, giving me a nice contrast from the front of the, uh, of the box.
Okay, this is looking pretty good. Like I said before, I'm really pleased uh, with this uh, medium walnut. The end grain really is popping to give the uh, a nice contrast between the end grain and the the uh, the front here. So you can actually really uh, the the through dovetails really stand out. I'm really pleased with that. So we're gonna let this dry a little bit. We're gonna go back, put another coat of the uh, the Danish oil on, and then um, and then I think we're gonna be done. And oh, we're gonna put uh, some hardware on it, and then we'll be done. Okay. We'll see you then. Okay, now that the box has been stained, uh, I put a couple of coats on here. Again, it's looking pretty decent. And, and again, I, I like the way that the end grain kind of pops out. Um, now I have to attach the handles, and because I'm going to be building a lot more of these, I built a, a little jig, a little cheater for me. It's got the X and the Y on here, put it on here. What I did is I found the center point, um, and then I found the distance between the two holes. I went half on one side of the center point, half on the other side of the center point, drilled a couple holes. So I'm going to drill a couple holes here and hope that they, uh, that they look all right. So let's let's go here. Make this work. Oh, need a bigger drill. centered looks okay all right we'll do the the other side
That was pretty easy. Not bad. I'm happy with it. And uh, again, I know I mentioned it, the jig, some of you out there calling, you know, saying that it's cheating. I don't care. I like the way it looks and it works for me. So I'm, I'm happy with the jig and I'm happy with the box I made. All right, guys, um, if you like the video, hit the like button and hit the subscribe button. I appreciate it. And we'll see you next time. Take care.